This is a 25 marker from Edexcel, paper three. Uh, it covers uh, microeconomic and macroeconomic policies that would improve UK competitiveness. I suggest, as always, read this question, come up with your own answer, write out your own answer, then come back and watch the rest of the video, see how your answer compares with what I've written. Um, so the question reads, evaluate the possible microeconomic and macroeconomic policies, which could be used to improve UK competitiveness. Um, and we've got some information from the extracts that I've pulled here um, that I think is sort of key and will work into our answer. So figure four, which is here, shows basically this plateau in UK um, productivity following the 2009-2008 financial crisis. You can see that in the dotted line, that's kind of what you would have expected to happen if the trend uh, pre-2008 had continued. But instead, we get this hard plateau in productivity around 100, um, which is the index value. So basically, the UK index of output per hour worked has stayed the same over the last you know, several years. And then we've also got this value here, which is GDP per hour worked. Again, kind of a measure of your per hour labor output. Um, Japan is worse than us. They're like about 8% lower than us. But you can see Italy, US, France, and Germany are all better than us. Germany is like 35% better than us. France and the US are hovering around 30%. Italy is about 12% better than us, I'd say. So in you know, Italy is not got a particularly strong economy, so that's pretty poor showing um, for us. Um, and then we've also got this value here, which is the proportion of adults with low literacy and or numeracy skills by age. And you can see England here is sort of par with the US, a little bit better than Italy, but we're doing worse than Spain, Northern Ireland, France, Canada, Germany, Japan, and South Korea. Some of these are not surprising, but, you know, for example, Spain and France, you know, we maybe we expect to be a bit closer to them. Um, and you can see sort of um, our... We're about 30% for both, right? So we're maybe like 29, 28 for the under 24s and also for the over 55s. Um, so those are sort of key statistics that suggest that we're not particularly uh, productive as a population and that we might not be that competitive. Uh, so with these types of questions with paper three, I'm always thinking about going micro for my first point and macro for my second point. And specifically, I'm going to, for my microeconomics point, I'm going to focus on labor market deregulation as a sort of broad category of policies, which is probably going to include lowering the national minimum wage or the national living wage, um, maybe reducing restrictions on hiring and firing for businesses, maybe reducing the power of trade unions, reducing other kinds of regulations that govern uh, the workplace all of which should drive down labor costs for businesses um, and hopefully um, improve competitiveness as a result. And topic B, macroeconomics, I'm going to go for trade liberalization. Um, you'll notice, I, this might be a little bit confusing to people, that I'm putting labor market deregulation as a microeconomic policy, because you might have learned that as part of fiscal policy in the macroeconomic sections of the course. Um, we do sort of cover fiscal policy generally in the macroeconomic section, but a lot of those policies are primarily going to affect the sort of finances of business. And so for the purposes of this essay, that would be, you know, a pretty strongly microeconomic policy that would also have macroeconomic effects. So it's also generally going to affect, say, aggregate supply. If it affects businesses, it's also going to affect aggregate supply for the most part. Um, so, you know, this micro macro distinction isn't super set in stone, isn't super hard because a lot of policies are going to affect both. And this is kind of an example of that. Um, so for microeconomics, in terms of definitions, I'm going to think about um, unit labor costs. And this is the, the average cost of, a, of output for a unit of labor. Um, of labor for a unit of output. Sorry, that should be the way around. And unit labor cost is like a generally a pretty good uh, measure of sort of a combination of labor productivity and also just how expensive labor is for businesses. Um, if we're not very productive, we're probably going to have higher labor costs because you need to hire more people to get the same amount of stuff done. So that's kind of what we're going with or with that being the core definition. 
Um, the analysis here is going to be um, that, you know, I'll throw in a few different policies, so lowering the national minimum wage, um, reduce severance require requirements for businesses, um, reduce the power of trade unions. Um, that should lower the unit labor cost um, because wages fall. Uh, wages and other costs of fall. This should um, increase output for businesses and profit, which might drive, drive reinvestment. Um, and increase overall output. Um, so in terms of a diagram that would illustrate kind of the point that we're going for here, I've got two options. So we've got, um, we could do like a, a national minimum wage diagram, right? So that's kind of this one over here, um, which is showing basically um, two levels of wages, we're going down because we're reducing the national minimum wage. That should increase our level of employment in the economy as a whole, which should increase our overall economic output, improve our productivity, improve our competitiveness. We're also lowering the costs for businesses. And the key part of this diagram that I'm interested in sort of hovering over is the deadweight loss here, which when during our higher previous national minimum wage was A plus B, so this big triangle here. Um, now that we have reduced our minimum wage, it's this smaller triangle here, so it's just B. So we've pretty effectively removed deadweight loss from the economy, which is a reasonably good representation of sort of how productive we're being. Like, are we being efficient in our production of goods? Are we being efficient in our allocation of goods? If we're removing deadweight loss, our sort of economic performance overall is improving. Um, and it also is sort of reflective of the fact that we are not wasting labor as much, right? We're employing more people and we're employing them for a more competitive price. So you can see that higher level of employment um, on the diagram and you can see the fall in dead weight loss. Another alternative for the microeconomics would be to use some kind of cost and revenue diagram. This is for the monopolistic competition, but you could you could probably also do this for you know a competitive market or even oligopolistic. I just think this is the easiest um, and so it's sort of cost and revenues versus output, and you can see the uh, marginal cost and marginal revenue, which I didn't label, and you can see marginal, sorry, that's not marginal cost and marginal revenue, that's average revenue and average cost. Marginal revenue, revenue. and this is going to be marginal cost one, average cost one, marginal cost two, average cost two. So what we're showing here basically is a fall in average costs and a fall in marginal costs as your labor costs decrease. So what comes with that shift is an increase in prices. So this is reflective of our price competitiveness as an economy. We're also increasing our output, which suggests our overall capacity in the economy is increasing, right? If this is happening at all of the, it, it's sort of reflective of our ability to produce more goods and it's adding up over the course of the whole economy. And you can also see kind of when I was talking about increased profit, maybe driving investment, you can see our profit margin um, is A previously, and as we're lowering our labor costs, it's now B. So it's sort of higher because of a higher output, but also our profit margin is higher. Um, so I think, I think this is a really good diagram to sort of illustrate the point that we're making. So I would use one of these. Um, I'm probably gonna opt for the second one. So I'm gonna snip that and take it over here. Can't avoid getting a little bit of the other ones, that's fine. And then in terms of application, I'm going to opt for um, putting in one of these points probably about um, productivity being stagnant. Um, just to point out, and I think the argument here is kind of like, if we've got lower productivity, we don't want to be overpaying for that labor because it means our businesses are not very competitive. Right, so this is kind of the way that you're using this is to say our productivity has kind of stayed stagnant. So 
if our wages are too high in the economy, if we're setting higher and higher minimum wages, we're going to become really uncompetitive compared to other countries because the costs keep going up, but the output really isn't increasing. Um, and then I think for the evaluation, I'm going to say, first and foremost, right, like this may be more of a problem with, um, say, education or skills or technology rather than with wage levels. So maybe like we want to target that first. And here's where I'm going to bring in this part about like us ranking poorly on literacy and education, like saying basically that's the issue as opposed to, you know, that we have wages that are too high. And then the other point I could make an evaluation or an alternative to this is to say um, that maybe lower wages and regulations would decrease worker motivation and further reduce um, productivity. So you can go for either of those points, either of them will work. I kind of like the use of the application here. I think you want to mention education somewhere if you can in this in this topic because it's a pretty core part of the of the problem. Um, with the macroeconomic point then I'm going to do maybe something like price competitiveness which is the sustained ability of a country's businesses to compete on price um, with the businesses of their countries. Um, and then for the diagram, or I'll do the analysis first. So for the analysis here is basically going to be, um, first off, we could create enter free trade agreements, which is going to lead to lower tariffs imposed on our goods when we export, which will increase competitiveness. Um, I could also say um, that we will reduce tariffs on imports, could lead to lower input good costs, which will again lead to greater price competitiveness, more opportunities for investment. Because again, profit margins presumably are better if you're lowering those input good costs, therefore we can invest in better technology. Um, and more, yeah, greater, greater price competitiveness and more um, investment. And then for the diagram, again, I'm gonna do a slightly weird one, which is I'm gonna use a tariff diagram that's not surprising. What is surprising is maybe the way it's oriented. So A, I'm gonna make France, and B, I'm gonna make England. So you can see the, um, the demand and supply curve. Normally that would be for our economy. I'm making it for, foreign, for a foreign trade partner, and I'm making this sort of uh, world supply line is basically us, it's, it's England. And so we have us with the tariff and us without the tariff. And we're showing that as we impose a tariff, we're reducing our price, increasing our price competitiveness. So our production goes from Q1 to Q2. And this is just kind of illustrating the advantage of removing tariffs and increasing our quantity. So it's a little bit weird because of you've got to kind of explain the orientation. Um, but provided you label it properly, this uh, won't be an issue. And that's the best diagram, I think, to illustrate the point that we're making. Um, and it's a macro diagram, which is helpful. So I don't really have a super strong point in terms of application. Um, the GDP, I could bring in this because these are kind of our trade partners, but it's a very similar point to the points that we've been making in elsewhere. I'll just slot it in. I don't think it's like the strongest use of application, but it's kind of what they've given us. Um, in terms of evaluation for this point, I might again be thinking about like, um, pointing the finger elsewhere in terms of the source of our problem. So I might say the UK will never be a low cost producer like you know, China or Bangladesh. Um, our labor costs are simply too high. It would be better to focus on technological innovation. Uh, innovation. Right, so again, sort of pointing to like, maybe there are other areas of our economy that we should be focused on more. Um, 
I might also point out, and this is a little bit of context, like leaving the EU um, makes this a less viable strategy as we are no longer in a customs union with our largest trading partners. Right, so again, just a little bit of context. Also, you could use as evaluation there. And this is a slightly older, I think this is 2019 maybe, so that would have been a more relevant point when they were asking the question. Um, and maybe that's kind of what they were digging out with the question anyway. In terms of a judgment, I might say, um, while reducing tariffs, we're reducing trade restrictions and labor regulations should improve price competitiveness. The UK's productivity challenges run much deeper. A comprehensive overhaul of our education system and a dramatic improvement in technological is necessary for us to achieve true competitiveness. So just kind of pointing at those other factors, bringing them in and saying, you know, long term, that's probably a more important factor in terms of UK competitiveness. Um, so I hope this is helpful. I hope this is clear. Um, I'd be curious to hear what kind of arguments you guys have come up with. So, you know, leave those in the comments and uh, and I'll, yeah, I'll have a look at them and see, we can see how they compare with what I've been writing.